Welcome everybody to Cooking with Friends right here on the Outdoor Pavilion at White Oak Estate and Gardens here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We're always happy to invite you into our walls, so to speak. This is a beautiful facility. You see the fireplaces cooking behind you. Normally we have fish and what? A little pigs in yeah, there, some just kind of pigs, yeah. some nice sausage on top. Yeah, we yeah. have a rotisserie in there. Great wedding facility, unbelievable conference center. So if you're looking for a special place, what's more special than this, right? Nothing more special <laughs> than this uh, this place right here. So I have a uh, uh, chef Ian Lede here. By the way, my godmother's name was Lede. I really? never told you that. Yeah, we so we be must related. be related. Yeah. So you got any money in the family? Oh no, not really. Oh no, you're not related <laughs> to me then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we, uh, what are we doing today? So today we're going to do a crawfish etouffee. Now, it's a little late in the season for crawfish, but right. that doesn't mean we can't have etouffee. Yeah, and etouffee comes from the French word etouffee, to smother, to cover and smother. That's where the word etouffee comes in. So when we think about an etouffee, we're thinking about smothering or covering the crawfish with a lot of flavor and other ingredients. So every name of a dish has a reason for that name. So etouffee, now you know what it is, to smother or to cover. So what are you going to do first here? So, I got some stock here, by the way, crawfish stock, just beautiful crawfish stock boiling away. So okay. we're going to start with a little bit of butter. A little bit of butter, nice yeah. And and normally, you know, even in, uh, in chef's kitchens, we kind of get our pot hot, so when we throw our butter in, it's going to start to... Uh, to cook a little bit. Often you have to worry though because it'll burn really yeah, if fast it's too. too hot the, the milk solids and the butter are just going to start to caramelize and it's just going to burn way too yeah, quick. Yeah, burn turns real brown and that'll yeah. take away from that sweet butter flavor that we're looking for in an etouffee. Yeah. So once the, uh, and so we're using a, a thick cast iron pot too. Normally we would have that black cast iron. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing, it's just been colored so we still have that real thick uh, metal. Yeah, so, so it's uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, absolutely done nice here. So what's next? So next up, we're going to have our uh, onions, bell peppers, celery, and garlic. Now, 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 this is often referred to as the Trinity. Yeah. And the Trinity in Louisiana cooking means that it's everywhere. The Trinity in the Catholic faith means that it's omnipresent. It's always <laughs> there on the spot. Onion, celery, bell pepper is the trinity in our cooking. Of course, you have yellow and gold bell peppers. Yeah, just and for some color. And it's, yeah, yeah, Mardi Gras. It's, Mardi, it's carnival in Louisiana. And, and Go ahead. As you can tell, our, our pot's starting to boil. You can hear it. It's telling us to go with it. Pots talk to you. So. I say that all the time. I tell my students at Nickel State University, pots talk to you. You just need to know the language. And that's it right there. You hear it burning. It's saying, throw something in here, right? That's really good. And you can start to smell that butter. Oh, they, yeah, there you go. So I'm going to stir that around for you. And, uh, and you want to you wanna cook this enough to start to pull the sugars out, right? Yes, sir. So those onions, they, uh, they have natural sugars in them. Uh, so whenever we're smothering them, it's going to start to pull them out and extract that to make it nice and sweet. Now, normally I tell the chefs at, at Nickel State, you know, I have my culinary school at Nickel State. I always tell my young students, always cover and protect the garlic. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put the garlic in first. That hot oil will just burn that garlic very quickly. Yeah. Whereas if I put my onion, celery, bell pepper, my trinity in first, then the garlic, I'll protect that garlic and just let it ooze that beautiful flavor in as well. Okay, there you go. What's next in here? All right, so next up. You don't mind gonna... if I stir your pot? No, huh? go, ahead, go right ahead, chef. <laughs> okay. So we got some white flour. We're going to put this in here just to make like a blonde roux to start and as it cooks it's going to darken up. Yeah, now you say blonde roux, uh, the important thing in an etouffee or in most classic cuisine, uh, an, an, a, a blonde roux means that you didn't cook the flour in oil enough to turn it brown. Brown is going to change the flavor of the roux, plus it's going to thicken less. The more you cook flour, the more you burn the starch, so it's not going to thicken as much. So in an etouffee you want to make sure you protect the starch and not cook it too much because you don't want to overpower the flavor. The dark rule overpower the flavor. So you have a, you see, so basically you have a, a, what we call a barmane, just a nice white, a white roux. Okay, everything else needs to probably go yep. in at this I think point, it's right? About that time. Yeah. So we're going to go in with some diced tomatoes, some nice fresh tomato sauce. Yeah, tomato, a big part of, uh, of Louisiana cooking. Yep. I have some fresh bay leaves from here at White Oak. Beautiful, right out the garden. And then we have some green onions and some parsley. 
Good. Now, now pick up a good spoon of that and let them see what it looks like. All of those flavors going together. I know the camera's right on you. Look how beautiful. You, you eat with your eyes first, right? Yeah. So you know when you look at this, it's going to be good. So, Chef, you're going to go in with your crawfish next? Yes, sir. We're going to season and then go in with crawfish. Uh, salt, pepper, granulated garlic, not fresh. But let us show those crawfish tails to them really good. A nice lot of little. people don't know what they look like. So crawfish aren't really in season, but we get these. We have these nice peeled tails for us today. And, and we can have them all year long. We have them yeah. frozen from our seafood supplier. So, Chef, you ready for your stock? Yes, sir. This is crawfish stock made with the shells of the crawfish, and we're going to put it right in. We only want to put enough because this is a stew. It's not a soup. So we want to make sure that we only put enough stock in to thicken that sauce, and then we'll add stock as needed. If we put too much stock up front, we got to go ahead and water it down. Then we have to cook it out too much, and, of course, the dish won't be as flavorful. So anyway, Chef, uh, you got a little bit to throw onto your uh, dish over there? Yeah, I have some prepared right here for us today. And we always serve it over rice. Yep. Look so at that. Just going to get a nice little spoonful. Oh, yeah, right around. Oh, right. beautiful. Look at that, huh? How about a little more? Oh, yeah, yeah, just like my baby picture right there. One more. Beautiful, One more. huh? Yeah, there Gorgeous we go. stuff. And I'll throw a little bit of that on it. That's the way it's done, y'all, right here on Cooking with Friends. Thank you for having me, Chef. Hey, what do you mean? You're here every day. <laughs>